Well, next. from Lord of the Elves to a Queen of the Desert, our next guest has played them all. Take a look. Hugo Weaving first knocked us for six in the Aussie TV series Bodyline back in 1984. You can do anything if you want it badly enough. Then came an award-winning performance as blind photographer Martin alongside Russell Crowe in Proof. He lit up the screens as drag queen Mitzi in the adventures of Priscilla, queen of the desert. Come on, girls. Rehearsal time. It was as Agent Smith in the Matrix blockbuster trilogy that shot Hugo to international fame. World domination came next as the Elf Lord Elrond in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Come who you were born to be. A complete about face followed in the eerily sinister V for Vendetta. The versatile villain changing face once more as Red Skull in Captain America. And now a new chapter begins. Wow. Yes, a very big round of applause for this man. Hugo Weaving's on the set, everyone. Thank you. Uh huh. Thank you. We are not worthy. <laughs> Thanks for coming in, mate. Be still. It is lovely to see you. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Yeah, have you been busy? Uh, yeah, I have actually. Do, mostly doing um, theatre this year. Mm. Really. But um, yeah, been, been busy. But this was what a, a year ago now. Yeah. Doing the dressmaker. Well, yeah. everybody is is waiting with bated breath for this. What a cast! It looks like a, a, a beautifully shot film. Fabulous script, and and we just can't wait for it to come out. Well, what was it like for you? Uh, great fun to work with Joss Morehouse again, who directed me many many years ago in a wonderful film called Proof. Yeah, well, the first film that I did that I was really thrilled to do quite early on in my career. So she's a great writer and director, mm. and she's adapted this from a novel by Rosalie Ham, which is a book that many many people enjoy. It was a mm. huge hit over here. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. We were shooting out in country Victoria mostly, and in the Docklands. And um, it's set in the 1950s, small country town. Kate Winslet, wonderful actress, yeah. comes, comes back to town to the, where she lived as a child to sort of sort out a few things that she doesn't quite understand about why she had to leave. And uh, there's a lot of comedy in it, um, extraordinary sets and costumes, great art department, and Don McAlpine's photography is fabulous. So yeah. we had a huge cast. There's many, many people in this cast, many great Australian actors. All uh, of them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> extraordinary. Quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, you, you shot a couple of scenes in Little River. I just love yeah. the whole idea of Little River. But working mm. with Kate and Liam, I mean, the three and of you... Judy. And Ju yeah, Judy. And Judy Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. T tell, tell me about what, what that does to you as an actor. When well, you work yeah, because they're, they're all very different people, you know. I mean, they're all very different actors, actually. But um, perfect for their roles, all of them. And um, it was... I'm, I don't want to say it was all great fun, it was, but it's hard work too, you know, and this particular film has many different tones to it. It's, yeah. it's quite a complex piece tonally, not to watch, it's absolutely delightful to watch, but mm. to, to strike the right tone in performance was really difficult. Mm. Um, but to watch people like Judy Davis at work is a real treat. You know? She's so brave, isn't she? Um, just for, the, for, for actors, young actors and university students love watching our show, when you say that, um, to hit the right tone yeah. um, and, and, and doing scenes and sometimes in different orders and whatnot, how do you find that tone? How, how, do, you, how do you go behind what's just written there and, and discover that right tone? It depends entirely on the film. Every film's different. But this, this film, because it, um, one minute you're asked... To, it, it, it borrows a lot from a spaghetti western, so you've got very, very fabulous music, mm. uh, quite, quite massive close-ups, mm. extreme sort of uh, wide landscapes, and you know you're being asked as an actor to, and the characters are quite grotesque actually, some of them, so you're being asked at times to be much larger than you might otherwise mm. want to be on film. Mm. You're sort of in danger of being much too big, yeah. if you like. Yeah. Well, you're the copper, hooray. Right? Should, should we yeah. have a little bit of this? Yeah, let's have a look. Virgil Dunnage is back. Haven't seen her since she was a kid. What now she turned out? How's my mother? Molly doesn't get out much. I don't know why you've come to this hole. I reckon you came home for one of two things. Revenge or me? Stunning. You can transform people. Use it. Tilly Dunnage, you've enriched my life. I reckon you can make some bloke pretty happy. It looks great, Hugo. It's being described yeah. as an Aussie Western. Does that kind of sum it up? 
Yeah, pretty well. It, it's a uh, spaghetti western, mm. and yeah. and it's got a revenge sort of trajectory to it. So it's 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 a lot of fun, but it's quite dark too. It's got a great dark twist, and and I have to say, a lot of people need to take their you know tissues with them because mm. it's quite sad. It will make you laugh. It will. It will. Cry. That's right. <laughs> it will indeed. <laughs> hey, the dressmaker opens in cinemas uh, next Thursday, the 29th. It's wonderful. You're also working on Mel Gibson's film Hacksaw Ridge. Mm. You've just joined the cast, but yes. again, you know Vince Vaughn and you know all those. Um, Andrew Garfield yeah. I mean, and Sam Worthington. And, yeah. and my son. And your son? Yeah. Really? Harry Just Green with his actor, isn't he? Yeah. How fantastic yeah. is that? <laughs> I won't be doing anything with him, but he's in it, so I yes. have to mention him. That's good. Cool. Tell, tell us quickly about, um, about Hacksaw Ridge. Uh, look, it's based on a true story about a um, conscientious, conscientious objector in uh, World War II, a guy called Desmond Doss and uh, came from a fairly religious uh, background, didn't want to kill anyone, didn't want, to f didn't want to fight, but didn't feel that it was right not to join up. So he, he, he does join up in a particular capacity and ended up... Um, I, I'm, I'm not giving away no, uh, no. the story, because Same he, he ended up winning, mm. winning the Congressional Medal mm. of Honour for, for extreme bravery, um, wow. um, but he, ne he, he refused to carry a gun, so that's the film. Is there any truth story. to uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert 2 coming out? I mean, yes, please. Just, we, 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 were, we were discussing that many, many years ago. We, yes. we had all sorts of ideas about what the sequel would be, and one of them was that we should go to the moon in a, in a, kind, of <laughs> in a kind of rocket and do all yes. sorts of space yes. stuff. Yes. <laughs> but I, I still think that's quite a good idea. Yeah, the point of not. I don't think there's only been, been any more discussions since then. <laughs> well, you could go and get Matt Damon off Mars. Matt Damon. Yeah. 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 Well, Priscilla goes to Mars, would be good. Yeah, how do we do that? There you go. <laughs> got it there. Quietly. You got us. Thanks, Hugo. Hugo, Hugo lovely to see you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. Much. Thanks, Thanks a lot. <laughs> Best. That is for certain, and it's great to see him. Well, the dressmaker will be released in cinemas on October 29. It is absolutely fabulous. 